Alright guys, um, had to take some time out of my schedule to shoot a video on my phone here real quick because we have some news, we have some new developments, we have some different things happening, and um, in some regards they are the things that a lot of people probably expected, and in a couple regards maybe not, but they're very relevant to the future of this team for next year and maybe um, in some cases the years after. They're relevant to the video I made last night in part. They're relevant to videos that I was going to make in the future that probably no longer need to be made. So I'll be addressing that in this video right here real quick because uh, it took like a day for the Seahawks to start making real free agency moves to really start putting their foot down and kind of identify the kind of team they want to be next year. And they didn't do anything huge, but they did kind of indicate the kind of team that they're going to field next year. And <clears throat> I'm pretty happy with most of it. I'm not thrilled with all of it. So let's go down the list. Um, yesterday, you know, I already knew this at the time of the video that I made last night. So I mentioned it actually. We did sign Jason Myers to a four-year deal worth like $16 million. Um, he's a very good kicker. He made the Pro Bowl last year, so that's good. He gives us some stability there. We don't have to keep, you know, scrounging around for random, you know, guys who got kicked out of other teams. So, you know, that's good. My, my problem would be that kicking in the NFL, especially right now, feels very random. So, to me, we're paying all this money on a guy who... He might completely fall apart when he has to kick in a different stadium now. He might, you know, just lose whatever he had that made him so good last year. Like, other than guys like Vinatieri and Robbie Gold, kicking is random as it gets in the NFL right now. Like, kickers go from best in the league to worst in the league so quickly, and there's very little rhyme or reason to it. So, I don't love giving big money to a kicker, but... We had to do something, and this is better than just betting on old guys and cast-offs, so I like that. We no longer need to worry about the kicking spot for quite some time because he's going to be here for at least a few years. <coughs> so, down with that. I can't say I love giving all that money to a kicker, but I, I think it's better than, you know, going after some old guy like Matt Bryant and just hoping he has one more year left when he probably doesn't. Um, the other bit of good news is we have short up the linebacker spot. I pointed out linebacker is a position of dire need in the offseason, and we have filled that need. We filled it by keeping K.J. Wright. He is returning on a short-term deal, which is exactly what I wanted. I didn't want to give him a ton of money because he's coming off that you know, knee injury that limited his uh, availability and his effectiveness last year for sure. But he still seems to be able to play at a high level. And if he's healthy this year, he might go back to being a, you know, fringe pro bowler. And he can start next to Bobby just like he has pretty much his whole career. And that kind of takes care of the problem right there because you only really need two linebackers in the NFL right now because you're playing nickel defense so often. And just to make sure... We also re-signed Michael Kendricks, who well, who knows if he'll be in prison next year or not, but we do have him for on a one-year deal. Pretty cheap as far as I know as well. It's worth up to $5 million, but it probably won't be worth anywhere near that much, I don't think. And we also, I think, re-signed Austin Calitro, which I don't really care about. To me, Calitro is the very definition of replacement level, but Calitro, he has experience in this defense, I guess, so... Basically, multiple, multiple signings at the linebacker position tell me that in terms of our defense, linebackers are fine. Special teams may be another thing, but our defensive linebackers, good, solid. So that's the good news. I'm happy KJ's back. That's a big thing. He might only have a couple years left, but it's a short-term deal, so hopefully we get those couple of good years. And hopefully he bounces back from that injury. Now, there's one thing that I just got word about like 10 minutes ago. I need to address it um, because it pertains to the video I made last night. Uh, Mike Upati, 
formerly a 49er, formerly an Arizona Cardinal, has signed on a one-year deal. I don't know the money yet. I'm assuming it's not very much, probably around five million, maybe five and a half. I'll find out later. But um, he's an offensive guard, so he was a name that I mentioned in my video last night, but I didn't really like him because... You know, when I was going through free agent offensive guards that we could sign going into uh, 2019, I listed three guys who were veterans, who were good players, who were coming off injury, injury plagued seasons, who would take a one year prove it deal because they just couldn't stay healthy the last year or two. But I felt very confident that those three guys I listed TJ Lang, uh, Andy Leviter, Levitre, and um, Josh Sitton all had at least one year left. Mike Upati, I don't know. He was not very good last year, even when he was healthy. There, there's... To me, he is the guy most likely to just be done of, of those four guys, because those were kind of the four guys I was looking at as like established veterans. And Upati was the one I wanted the least. Now, I'm glad we did get an established veteran, and he may very well end up starting for us this year, even if we get Fluker, but this is not really the one that I wanted because it seems to me that he's already kind of washed up. The other guys, Lang, Sitton, Levitre, I didn't think they were washed up yet, but to me, this guy is. So, I don't love it. I'm glad we went out and got a veteran because we're going to need him, but I really kind of hope he doesn't have to start for us this year. And to me, it seems likely that he will be because this makes it less likely that we go get one of the other three guys. So I'm a little disappointed in that. But um, that's the way we're putting this team together. Like I said, in the next day or two, I'll have another video about the rest of the offensive line and... Um, then I'll move on to defense, but uh, we did patch holes over the last 24 hours, so exciting. See you guys later.